As I've said many times, the radicals are just exponents. And remember, the exponents have multiplication and division properties. Well, radicals have multiplication and division properties as well. And we're going to look at the division property of a radical. And specifically, we're looking at square roots. Um, for any a that's greater than or equal to 0 and any b that is strictly greater than 0, the square root of a over b is the same thing as the square root of a over the square root of b, which is why that b has to be strictly greater than 0 because we can't divide by 0. And once again, this rule does not work with imaginary numbers, and so we're st stuck with positive numbers. So let's look at this example. Remember the simplified rules for radicals that I can't have a fraction underneath the radical symbol, and in this case I have 3 fourths, so the way to fix that is to use this property to split the numerator and denominator up, and I end up with the square root of 3 over 2. Now it is totally okay and acceptable to have a square root in the numerator, you just can't have one in the denominator. Now this rule, like the product rule, works both directions. So in this case, you can simplify this multiple ways. You can go ahead and try to simplify the square root of 242, or you can squish the fraction back together using the division property and then simplify this because 242 divided by 2 is 121, so the square root of 121 is 11. So the property, I can use it to split up a fraction or I can put the fraction back together and simplify it. And which one you choose depends on the problem you're given. Sometimes it's easier to split it up and sometimes it's easier to put it back together. Now let's look at this example where I combine a bunch of stuff underneath a radical including multiple bases and a negative exponent. As I said, these are these radicals are just exponents, so why not combine them with exponential problems? And if you remember from the exponent problems, uh, I told you about making dealing with the problems in chunks. So I'm going to look at this problem in chunks as well. The square root is just the outside of the problem, so I'm going to deal with all the inside parts, like 12 over 3, which is just 4. And then x to the fifth over x to the negative 1 is 5 minus negative 1, or x to the sixth, so the x's are taken care of. And then y over y third is y to the 1 minus 3, which is y to the negative 2 power, which means it's y squared down there. And so I simplified the radical first, and now I can use my product and quotient rule to split this up into the square root of 4, square root of x to the 6th, square root of y squared, and then I get 2x cubed over y. So it comes out clean with nothing left in the radical. Now if you wanted to, you could have totally taken this and made it the square root of 12, the square root of x to the fifth, the square root of y, square root of 3, square root of x to the negative 1, square root of y cubed, but why? It's much easier to simplify it underneath the radical first, dealing, it with, uh, dealing with it as one chunk at a time, and then just seeing what you're left with. Now it is your turn to try the division property of radicals and see if you can simplify these three expressions. Finally, let's deal with that last simplified radical property, the one that says you cannot leave a square root in the denominator. And what we're going to do to take care of that is something called rationalizing the denominator. It's not a property, more like a process, and it means to make the denominator a rational number, meaning not a square root anymore. And the way we do that is to simply scale up the fraction using the multiplicative identity, meaning multiply the fraction by a version of one that gets rid of the square root in the denominator. And so let me show you an example, a very basic level example first. I have three over the square root of two which is not simplified. 
And so what I need to do to simplify this is to multiply this fraction by one, but I get to choose what one looks like. And in this case, I'm going to choose one to look like the square root of two over the square root of two. Because when I do that on my numerator, I get three root two, which is fine. And then root two times root two, which is just two. And so now this has a rationalized denominator and is therefore simplified. It doesn't look more simplified because it's actually more things actually written in there, but it is. This is the rule that was written a long time ago for algebra and we just have to stick with it. Now this next example, two over the square root of 18, you actually have different options here. Um, you might recognize that the square root of 18 is not simplified, and you can simplify that radical. You can just go ahead and multiply it by root 18 times root 18, and then simplify that. Or you can do what I'm about to do. I know that 18 is 9 times 2. And it's almost a perfect square. Like the 9's a perfect square, but the 2's not. So if I go ahead and multiply that by root two over root two, what I get is two root two over the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is a perfect square. And so then I end up with two root two over six, um, which gets rid of the radical, but it's not simplified yet because two over six is really one third. And so I end up with root two over three. So this one's simplified. Now if you wanted to, you could have multiplied it by root 18 over root 18, and you would have had two root 18 over 18, which you can then simplify. And if you simplified this in the beginning to be three root two, you multiply it by root two over root two and you'd get the exact same result, no matter how you did it. I just wanted to show you that you didn't have to necessarily multiply it by the denominator. You just have to get the denominator to be a perfect square. All right. Now let's look at this next example, um, negative three root two over root seven. This is very straightforward, um, seven's prime. So I have to multiply it by root seven over root seven, which gives me my denominator of seven. And then what do I get in my numerator? Well, I get a negative sign of three, and then I have to multiply two times seven and put it under the radical, and I get 14. And that's a simplified version. Now, one thing that I see people do, which you cannot do, is people will see the 14 and the seven and try to simplify those, but you can't because that's not really a 14. That's a square root of 14 and that's a seven. So things that are under the radical and not under the radical cannot be simplified. The only things that can be simplified are things that are both outside the radical, like the two and the six, are things that are both underneath the radical. All right, so don't try to simplify things that are ones inside, ones not. And now finally, we're gonna look at this example, the square root of 15 over 18, to illustrate to you one point. Um, I can use my division property of radicals and say this is square root of 15 over square root of 18 and then simplify that and then rationalize the denominator as necessary. Or I can see that 15 over 18 is not simplified itself as a fraction because it's both, both the numerator and denominator are divisible by three. And so I can go ahead and simplify that fraction first. Sometimes that's an easier way to do it because it just makes the number smaller to deal with. And so 15 over 18 is the same thing as five sixths. So now I can simplify this. Now I can go ahead and say, root five over root six by the division property, and then multiply the numerator and denominator by root six, and I end up with a root 30 over six, which is the simplified version of that. Now, there is an alternate technique, which is a little bit fancier, and it requires looking at this in a different way. Now, one of the reasons why I show you these different ways to do this is because I want you to start being a more critical problem solver. I mean, there's the way that I show you directly, and then there's the using your entire math toolkit and think about things you've learned in the past that might help you now. And that's what I want you to start doing. I want you to start thinking, well, is there something else that I can do here that'll make my life easier? And in this case, 
15 over 18, you can actually, instead of scaling the fraction down, you can scale the fraction up so that it has a perfect square in the denominator. In this case, I can just scale it up by multiplying it by two. And what I get is the square root of 30 over 36. And then when I split that, I get root 30 over six. So there's always more than one way to approach these problems. And I want you to start to look and strategize before you do your work. So think about what you're going to do and just sort of imagine the outcome and then think, is there a different way for me to do this, which is more streamlined or takes fewer steps. And that's going to become super important when you start to get bigger problems where you have to do this simplification at the end of something bigger. And that's going to happen a lot in geometry. So start getting that practice now. Now let's check and see if you can rationalize the denominators on your own. So I want you to simplify these three radical expressions, 2 over root 6, 18 over root 12, and root 72 over root 10.